Anna, I'm coming to you to do the development programme. Will I need any special equipment? No. Mm. No, I, I have the specialist equipment. Mm. It's called plasticine. Right. <laughs> you, if you were to come to me on a programme, what, what you'd expect is to, is to spend quite a lot of time playing with plasticine. Mm. It, it's playing in a constructive sort of way and I would direct what we do. But you'd be surprised how therapeutic it is to, to be rolling out and, and manipulating plasticine which does great for your nerves and your emotional mm. state if you're a little bit sort of worked up to begin with. Mm. I suppose it's quite fun really and quite malleable, you know, it's like returning a little bit to, you know, things you may have done as a kid. Oh, the adults love it mm. because as an adult the only time they've probably got to play the plasticine is when the children were grown up mm. and this is kind of like taking them back into their childhood and it's one of the, the nicer, mm. nicer things. Now the development program is about learning, and you say this can be done at any age. How does that work? Anybody in any way can learn at any age mm. if they feel motivated to. I say practically any age because children have to be matured to a certain level before they can take this on board. They have to be, because it's extra time and they see it as uh, something they're doing in addition to school, mm. some children are quite resistant to it. Mm. And also, until they're probably about seven or eight, their, their thinking style hasn't developed to its fullness. Mm. So I, 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 would, I find it difficult to kind of tap into where they are because mm. they, they, they haven't um, mm. plateaued and that's where they need to be really for me to pick them up. Mm. And then from then to any age, the oldest person I've worked with is 63. Right. So that really is, you know, you can just goes to show you can learn at any age. You can teach an old dog new tricks. I don't look at it like, like quite like that, but <laughs> yes, you can learn at any yeah. age. As a child, I used to be quite clumsy. My writing is still pretty dreadful. In fact, a lot of the time I write in block capitals just so it's legible for myself. I also have problems spelling and try to do it phonetically which with some words you just can't do. Would your program help with something like this? Would help with all of those things. Mm. Balance is an interesting one. Um, I use balance quite a lot mm. if I'm well, or when I'm not quite sure where somebody is, mm -hmm. if I'm asking them to memorise things, because we, we're doing a lot of work with, with imagination and yes. that thing. And if I'm not quite sure, I can use um, some balance techniques yes. to see where they are and mm -hmm. kind of do what they need to do. My background is actually having worked in the fitness industry for 10 years, and I find that balance myself is one thing that everyone can really develop unless they're an athlete. So it's interesting how you tie that in with the developmental approach. Yeah, it, it's all part of building the, the pathways through the mind. Mm. So um, balance, I find, is key to it. Yes. Um, also with balance, because it's it's part of the, the area we call dyspraxia, mm. it's, it's linked to how you use your body. Yeah. And when you write, your hand is part of your body. Okay. So you can be using um, techniques to, to develop your your writing. So yes, we, we put that in the programme as well. Mm. Uh, do a lot of things with imagination because learning is an internal process. Mm. It's not something that's hammered into you. Mm. It's something that you absorb. And uh, one of the ways to, to, to get the learning to happen is to use your imagination. Mm. Because let's face it, we all like using our yes. imagination. We do, all do that as a child, um, and so we, we learn to recognise words as a whole word, mm. as a picture. It's almost like it's on a picture card in yes. your mind, and then you, your spelling will improve as well. I find that really interesting because that relates back to uh, a well-known quote from Albert Einstein, where he said, "Intellect isn't so important." It's the imagination. So that's uh, it's, it's a very interesting approach. Yeah, and, and I do more than just working with a client helping you to mm. develop pictures. I also have 
um, some other techniques that I use that not only recognises you've got a picture, mm. but it's bit how to fine tune that picture so mm. it's most attractive and works best for you. Yeah. And in picture terms, it's a bit like tuning a radio from having a slightly fuzzy mm. sound to having a nice clear sound that you want to listen to. And we do this with the pictures in your mind so you have nice clear pictures that you want to look at. Now I've come across things when I was at university, such as the mind mapping approach, um, what do you think about things like mind mapping and um, phonics and, and that kind of thing? Do you have any opinion on those approaches? I do have opinions, <laughs> okay. yes. Uh, mind mapping is, is a great tool for picture thinking mm. people. Not just dyslexic thinkers, but people mm. who think in pictures. Yes. Because it means that, that you can really draw on the adage of a picture paints a thousand words. Yes. So if you get the picture there, you can remember the picture, you mm -hmm. can remember what's on it. And that's a bit great. It works for a lot of people, mm -hmm. but it doesn't work for everybody. And when it comes to phonics, I personally hate them. Mm -hmm. That's a personal thing. If you learn what a word looks like, and what a word means, and how, um, how it's said, like its sound, if you can learn or unpack those three things together, mm. your mind will work like a database. So whichever one of those three elements mm. you do the search on, the other two elements will come up as well. Right. When you learn like that, you don't need to break a word down into its mm. component parts. And the other thing about phonics is there are so many rules mm. about how you have to do this and how you have to do that. Mm. And with all the rules, come lots of exceptions to the rules. Mm -hmm. Now dyslexic thinkers are not famed for remembering or even wanting to remember mm -hmm. all those rules. One of the quotes I've come across is that dyslexic people always think outside the box because we don't live in the box. <laughs> is that something you agree with? <laughs> I think it's a very different thinking style mm. um, given that the, that the more left brain side mm -hmm. way of thinking is a lot more linear, it's sequential. Mm -hmm. That's the way um, our education system majors on in order to teach us and the way businesses mm -hmm. work on. Um, mm -hmm. Anybody who doesn't think like that, which is probably about 10% of us mm -hmm. being dyslexic thinkers, we don't fit in their box, it's mm -hmm. their box. Mm -hmm. You know, Our box is our own brain and mm -hmm. that it's three-dimensional colour got feeling mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a lot more for us to, to, mm. to learn how to manage. Yeah. I've heard the term attention deficit disorder, and it's usually associated with you know, lack of attention and easily becoming bored. Does your program address this issue? Yes, you've called it attention deficit mm. disorder. It's also referred to as attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Mm -hmm. What it is, is where somebody is not retaining their attention in one place. Mm -hmm. And when the hyper is included, it's because their mind is really coming mm -hmm. all over the place yeah. very, very fast. Mm -hmm. So um, part of that is because they're thinking pictures, mm -hmm. they, and picture thinking is very fast. Mm -hmm. Um, compared to auditory type mm. thinking. And they also have the ability to be able to be thinking lots of things all at the same time. Mm. And some people will liken it to watching, say, 10 television screens, all with different programmes on, all together, and they don't know which one to look at. So what I do is I, I help people to do two things. One is to turn the screens off mm. that they don't need right now, so they just look at one screen. Mm. And the other thing is, to learn how to control the speed of their thinking. Mm. Because when you control the speed of thinking and match it to the outside mm. environment, then they get a much stronger perception of what's really going on mm. around them. And if in the case of learning, that's material for them to learn and take on board, they can take it on board much more accurately, which means they'll be learning more accurately. That's interesting because one of the things I've experienced is that sometimes I tend to think of things at 100 miles a minute. So that would definitely be an approach that I would find useful. 